Good evening. Uh, my name is Deborah King, and today I'll be, I will be discussing strategies to teach reading. First strategy is um, used with whole brain, uh, not whole brain, phonics, brain screen, uh, phonics first uh, program. So with their program, they said they believe that using a multi-sensory approach um, helps kids retain the information that they're learning. Um, so they'll be engaged in all kinds of senses um, for their brain. So um, the senses that they use are uh, visual, auditory, tactical, and kinesthetic. And um, the reason why I say Phonics First, Brain Spring has two reading programs. Phonics First is for kindergarten, kindergarten all the way to sixth grade, and they have another um, program called Structures, and this is for seventh to twelfth. Um, the techniques are very similar, it's just that they have different grade levels, but they are both uh, programs that are used to teach um, reading. So, uh, the first things first, um, I like to use the three part drill in teaching kids. And um, just, if you didn't know, I teach second grade at Hazelhurst Elementary School, and so we were still going over the fundamentals of reading. Um, you know, very back early skills, alphabet sounds, stuff like that. So, um, especially being with this pandemic, I uh, have a lot, several kids who were still behind. Some started out at pre-K level, like they didn't understand you read from left to right. Um, they didn't understand different stuff like that. Like they, they, I mean, they had to start all the way through round one. They need to know their alphabets. They didn't even know their alphabets. Some of them didn't even know how to write their name. So um, the three-part drill and the multi-sensory approach has been very beneficial for me because I've noticed an instant improvement in all of my students. So the first part, like I said, was the three-part drill. And you engage, you use basically the different senses. The first part is the visual drill. In the visual drill, you show different students flashcards of letters, and as you show them the letters, they will say the sound. And on each uh, card of the letter, it's going to have the uh, a word uh, or sticker attached to it. Um, on my A flashcard, it has the apple um, stuck to it, um, flashcard up in the apple sticker. On the A, so I'll say A as an apple, they say ah, you know, they know, okay. It just jogs their memory with that connection. Um, so yeah, they say the different letter, the different sounds those letters make. After the visual drill, we move on to the auditory drill. And that's when I will say um, a sound and the kids will write the letter. So um, I'll say ah. I say a at and when they're saying the sound they have to we have to write the letter and the sound um, ideally they write in sand or gel or something where they can feel if they don't they can just use a whiteboard and a dry erase marker um, but they'll say a at and I'll say b b b ooh see the moose and the moon they say o o ooh e is an eagle e a e stuff like that the next part is the blending drill and that's when they put together the sounds and they put together the letters so and it's they're using their visual their senses to see the letter and they use the they think about the auditory with the sound so we'll have different flashcards and put them together and they'll say at cat and they have to point to each physically point and um, draw a line um, in the air to put them all together. And blend it. Excuse me. I was so tired. The sounds. And um, another strategy we use interactive strategies to get their brain going. So that is strategy number two. Um, for example, when I said shh, 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 we did, um, we put our arms together to introduce, and every time they were to use their hands together for a chart, they go shh. Essays makes shh. Or um, when I was teaching, um, I was um, 
I had I had a little game. Turn the introduction as we introduce our new skill with an interactive activity. And um, I was teaching uh, BL or BR, and I said br like brush BR br brush. So every time I said BR, they said I, every time I said a word with br being BR, they said br 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 like brush. Um, so it helped jog their memory by using specific gestures and movements. And so that also helps them remember the word. Um, we have our vow intensive activity. And in that case, because um, a lot of my kids, they struggle with their alphabet, their, their vowels, especially when it sounds similar. Like they get E and I mixed up quite a bit. So I'll say the word is leg, leg, and they'll say, oh, they'll write it as leg. I said, no, not leg, leg. So um, to fix that, we have this little activity where they'll write the letter E on one side of the board, flip it around, and write the letter I. And so we'll go through three different levels um, using that vowel sound. First uh, level is going to have the actual, uh, just the root sound. I'll say it. And they'll show me the side with eh. I say eh. They show me the side with e. And when I say spell or I say it, it. And I'll switch to it. I said et. I'll switch to e. Um, level three is with actual words. I'll say egg. They switch to e. And I'll say lid. Lid. So they'll switch to it. Um, because they know E makes E, I makes it, and after practicing that vowel different times, then they, um, you know, they do a little bit better in it because they can kind of catch, oh, you said it, spell, or spell, oh, and they can catch it and pretty much fix it. And, um, so that's what I do like. I love that, actually. Ideally, we hold up popsicle sticks, but, um, don't have them, and that's why we use our white one. Um, oh, and my favorite part of Brain Spring is the um, finger tapping and pounding. So, and this is where the tactical or kinesthetic part comes in. Um, I'll say the word is ship, ship. Horns up, ready, pound. Ship! And they pound their table. Ship. I said, tap it out. It and as they're breaking it down, um, isolating the sounds, they go, they tap each finger, so shh, it, and I say write it, and they write it, and it actually helps them break down each sound and write down, oh shh, that's S H and it, and S I, and that's P, so it helps them break it down, and then we like to lock and load for our red words. We have red screens. We like we associate anything dealing with their sight word. We call it a red word. And anything that's red is only used for that. So they know a red word. And they will lock and load it too. They, I say lock and load the word she. They say she. S. And they take their arm and tap their arm. S. H. E. She. And they be going at it. They, they lock and load. And it helps them uh, remember the spelling, remember how it sounds. It is a big, huge help when we are introducing a new word. We have a red screen, and we put a sheet of paper and a red crayon. We write over the sheet of paper over the red screen, and we write it several times. So by the time the students are done with that new skill, they would have written it, spelled, and locked and loaded a number of 15 times. Um, you know, practicing it over and over. So, in the red screen helps them feel it as they draw it. It is a huge help. So, the multi-sensory helps them to keep that information, keeps them from forgetting it. And um, another strategy that I love... With the wet red word, first thing is the visual drill, which I flash red, uh, red words, which are their sight words. And they'll go, ah, uh, at, get, she, he, and then I'll say um different words where they have to lock and load it and i'll say the word is when when lock and load go they say when w-h-e-n when and i say uh what 
What? W-H-A-T. What? That's just an example. They had to lock and load it, pull it down, and they break it down each letter and then re-say the whole word. And another part when you're teaching a red word, you have this red screen and usually a red crayon. And so you take a piece of paper, put it over the red screen so it has where you can feel it. The crayon go over the screen. And um, you take the red crayon, so they call it a red word. So seeing the color red, red is only reserved for red words. And um, sometimes we explain we have orthographic mapping where it's, we explain sometimes these words don't exactly make sense. Like the word have. Usually sneaky E would come in there and it would make the short vowel, the vowel say its name. But in have it does not. I see these words do not make sense. You just simply have to memorize them. So um, we have them to write the red screen and say the word is have. We show it to them. They write it three times. H-A-V-E have. H-A-V-E have. H-A-V-E have. Then they like and load it three times. H uh, have. H-A-V-E have. H-A. And so forth. And writing it with that screen. By the time we are done with the introduction, they will have written that word 15 times. So... Um, it should be ingrained in their brain, and we still do a daily review. Like I said, when the visual drill, we show them words that we've already shown them before, and then we lock and load words that they have already known at that point before we introduce a new red word. So that is all I have to say about the phonics first brain spring method. Next, I'll be talking about whole brain teaching.